The corrupt establishment was not willing to accept an outlier in the White House and began their attempt at overthrowing the president with a FISA warrant based on a fake Russian dossier. With no evidence of a crime, the FBI was discussing plans for a coup d'etat. According to court documents, several mainstream media outlets were hired to report on Russian interference as directed. And the American people, who put their faith in the mainstream media, were manipulated and turned against their lawful elected government. I basically have been uh, looking over the Mueller report, uh, uh, which basically uh, asserts a lot of things but offers very little proof of anything. It basically says, you know, the the uh, GRU did it, <laughs> you know, right up front. They just assert that. And then later on, they say, well, the GRU operating as, uh, I guess, using Guccifer 2 and DC leaks as uh, uh, People, people, representatives they've created to, to give false impressions to everybody. They say these are the agents of the GRU. And they also asserted that in certain periods, like in 25 July, they, they alleged or they apparently downloaded 70 uh, gigabytes of data. And then later on, they say, uh, and then on the, between the 25th of May and the 1st of June, they allegedly downloaded, you know, uh, hundreds or thousands of, uh, of emails. And, uh, you know, it's like they're alleging something is true. Then later on, they say, apparently they did this. And oh, by the way, they're using these pseudo representatives, Goose for Two and, and, uh, and DC Leaks, but they never offer any proof as to uh, the fact they, they assert that Goose for Two and uh, DC Leaks are, are in fact um, uh, representatives of the GRU, but they don't ever prove that. And then again, they talk about uh, uh, communications in the Moscow area where the GRU contacts a server in the Moscow area, and they uh, so allegedly pass some data there. And then they talk about Julian Assange in 2015, sending a note to, to an email to his, uh, to his uh, associates in WikiLeaks saying that uh, it would be better if the uh, if the GOP won the election, well, uh, and then of course they have different data talking about the DNC, the GRU went here and there, but you never know. They don't give you any specifics, so you could sort out. We, what I was doing was looking for something that would help me validate what they were saying, and I couldn't find anything in it. In fact, I found these contradictions, you know. And the, uh, and then they said, and oh by the way, uh, on page fifty. Uh, they say that this office uh, did not examine servers or any relevant items belonging to the victims of this tapping, you know, but the FBI, the DHS, and the states did. Well, you see, uh, the problem is uh, very simple, that uh, communications in the Moscow area between the GRU and a server and communication between Julian Assange and uh, DC or WikiLeaks associates, either in Europe or in the UK, is beyond what uh, the FBI or DHS could see, but is well within the purview of NSA and GCHQ and the BND and the other countries that are participating. So uh, it means that uh, there is alleging there's other evidence from other services, but not saying who they are. Uh, and, and also, um, it doesn't really, it doesn't really, uh, give you any indication of how they're making these connections, whether or not they're using IP numbers or MAC numbers or trace routes. There's no mention of trace routing or anything so they, that you can't follow the flow, you know, and it's mixing up time frames as well as, uh, you know, uh, sequences of events. They don't do things in chronological order. They mix it up. It's all basically, uh, but they keep repeating the same theme over and over that the GRU did it, uh, but there's no substance to any proof of it. So. The, 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 that's the problem I have. I couldn't find anything that was relevant that could say I can validate this and it's right. I couldn't do that with anything that Mueller was asserting. <laughs> In fact, you know, some of the footnotes referring back to the Rosenstein indictment, which used fabricated data from Goose for Two and, and what have you to say that, the, you know, it's the GRU. Well, even back there, they gave no evidence to to uh, uh, show that it was in fact the GRU. And, it, and if you looked at it from the scope of what they're talking about in the communications, 
it really falls under the purview uh, and uh, char charter of NSA. Now, what that means is, if you look, remember back with the uh, ICA, the Intelligence Community Assessment, which was really only three agencies, NSA, CIA, and FBI, and only selected analysts from those agencies can, were participating. But in that, uh, the CIA and the FBI had high confidence the Russians did the hacking. But NSA only had moderate confidence. So that meant to me that the whole thing was a sham. There was no evidence backing up any of it, uh, simply because NSA is the only agency that's really capable of being able to trace route all these programs all the way around the world. So I just saw the same thing here with the Mueller report. It's a puff piece. It has absolutely no substance to it. There was a tweet from Donald Trump uh, uh, with April 24, 2019, 8.19 a.m., which said, quote, former CIA analyst Larry Johnson accuses United Kingdom intelligence of helping Obama administration spy on the 2016 Trump presidential campaign. Wow. It is now just a question of time before the truth comes out. And when it does, it will be a beauty. Okay. So that is something I think uh, if you weren't aware of it, now you are. And it may uh, help that our, our next speaker uh, will be able to uh, inform you a bit more about this. So this is Larry Johnson, everybody, who was mentioned in this tweet. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, what was fascinating about this tweet is I was interviewed by One American News, Neil McCabe, and the information that I was passing on was really two-year-old information. I first presented it back in March of 2017. Uh, it was subsequently picked up by uh, Andrew Napolitano on Fox. He went on air, and he, he never talked to me, and I could have helped him because he misstated some things. But this was back when, the, when President Trump was saying that the FBI had spied on him which they had, but they had not wiretapped him. The wire, the so-called wiretap was electronic intercepts of communications by the British, the General Communications Headquarters, GCHQ, which is their version of NSA, where Bill used to work. Um, yep. What, uh, you know, and I, and I know this through a, through a variety of means. One is just knowing how the intelligence process works, how collection works, but two, I had a heads up from uh, friends on the inside. And in the summer of 2015, the British government, through its intelligence services, started a collection plan. The, the, and the collection plan is something that's very specific. It's written down, and it is designed to guide uh, the gathering of information. And the initial part of this collection plan was to identify everybody on the Trump team and figure out if anybody on the Trump team, who they were talking to, because they could intercept their emails, they could intercept their text messages, they could intercept their phone calls, and they could probably start developing a network to see who were they talking to, especially outside of the United States. Um, and that, that, in fact, is how they stumbled upon George Papadopoulos, because George was in uh, the United Kingdom at, uh, in the summer of 2015, uh, he was texting, emailing, and apparently, I think, at least one or two phone calls with Corey Lewandowski expressing interest to get involved with the campaign. So that's how his name surfaced and became part uh, of the British government. The, the way we know that there was British intelligence collected is that uh, depart a former Obama Department of Defense official by the name of Evelyn Farkas went on television, and the, the, the Joe and Mika Brzezinski show, uh, Morning Joe on the MSNBC, and she stated that they had, they had intelligence about Trump contacts with Russians and others. Um, that the Trump folks, if they found out how we knew what we knew about their, the staff, the Trump staff dealing with Russians, that they would try to compromise those sources and methods, meaning we would no longer have access to that intelligence. So I became very worried because mm -hmm. not enough was coming out into the open and I knew that there was more. We have very good intelligence on Russia. So then I had talked to some of my former colleagues and I knew that they were trying to also help get information to the Hill. A lot going on today. Yeah. Mark That's Alfred. why you have the leaking. Exactly. People are worried. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, 
and that the fact that she said they had intelligence tells you they either there are only two types of intelligence really that exist. There are human reports which CIA generates, and uh, then there are also human reports that the Defense Intelligence Agency generates. But those are far less and, and not really of the same sensitivity as what CIA produces. And then there are the electronic intercepted messages that come out of prime, uh, principally the National Security Agency. That's really the only two basic types of intel that come in. And the NSA material is always more interesting from the standpoint that you're getting people saying what they actually said. You're not having to necessarily interpret, but you can at least say that there was this person talking to this person. The fact that the Obama administration was taking that intelligence and then unmasking, because when it's passed from the, the British, the GCHQ, to NSA and to CIA, when it has U.S. persons in it, their names are masked. They'll refer to person one and person two, or a, a U.S. citizen one, U.S. citizen two. And so that for, therefore, these officials in the Obama administration, such as Susan Rice and Samantha Powers and others at State Department, could f submit a query and say, who was this person? We Because we have a need to know. And so when you get the, the, the pr process of unmasking, what, what is going on is the Brits were creating an intelligence predicate. They were creating a pretext, if you will, that the on the U.S. side, they could say, well, we have intelligence pointing to this. So it justifies a counterintelligence investigation at a minimum. And you're able to say that it's of, of concern because it's it's produced and I'll say it's written down in actual hard copy reports. They can see it, they can draw it up, it has a, a reference number that uh, you refer to. So th this was, the, the Brits played a very important role, uh, not only in intercepting those messages, but then also in helping target and set up members of the Trump campaign to make it appear that they were working as, uh, trying to work with or on behalf of Russia. And the, and the principal case in that is George Papadopoulos. George Papadopoulos uh, ultimately was approached by a fellow named Joseph Massoud, who in the Miller report is described as some uh, Maltese diplomat with ties to Russia, which is a lie. Yes, he's a Maltese diplomat, but he has far more extensive ties to the CIA and to the British MI6. He was, in fact, an asset, an agent of the British and he was working on their behalf because he's the one that goes to, uh, to Papadopoulos, plants the seed of meeting with uh, 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 Putin and getting information on Hillary Clinton and getting emails. So he's the one pushing all of that. Papadopoulos never raised it, never pursued, never said, oh, yeah, we should get that. It was instead being planted on him in hopes that he, like a, like a stupid fish, would take the bait. And he took enough of the bait in communicating that back to the Trump campaign that they created uh, a track record and an intelligence trail on that. And th therefore, when he denied it or however he lied about it, it, it put him in the trick box. But as has been proven, even in the – despite the fact that the Mueller report is disingenuous and dishonest, they did at least admit to the truth that nobody on the Trump team – responded to the overtures that were being made by the Russians. And those overtures that were being ostensibly made by the Russians were really plants from the British government. Now, I want to go back to something which Bill was talking about, which was the January 2017 uh, ICA or intelligence assessment, which was where it was officially put forth that Russia hacked the elections and that Russia was this menacing power, which all of America, as John McCain put it, had to mobilize as if, as if we were at war. If you remember McCain's uh, bellicose language at that point is that Russia committed an act of war in our elections, which is what he said. And I want to highlight something which is coming at, which has just come out over the course of the, of the weekend and was kind of not noticed all that much. But about a month ago, Rand Paul tweeted that he had been told by very high level sources that John Brennan wanted the Christopher Steele dirty dossier, this piece of nonsense and crap, a really nasty thing put together 
by again, former, in quotation marks, MI6 agent, Christopher Steele. He wanted that not just to be leaked to BuzzFeed and published, which it was by an intelligence community operation. He wanted it to be formally right there in the middle of that intelligence assessment. <clears throat> now think about that. Here's the president coming into office and in John Brennan's mind and whatever the plan was, they're about to put out there as an official United States intelligence assessment that the president of the United States has been compromised by uh, Putin and that he's a sexual pervert. The question you have to ask yourself is how close were we at that point? What was the actual plan that Brennan had in his head that they were trying to effect at that particular point? How close were we uh, to tanks on the White House lawn, so to speak, if that was the actual logic and that was the actual thinking? The second thing which comes up, if this is true, and Bob Woodward was on Fox on last Sunday, looking like he'd seen a ghost and saying, yes, this is true. This is what Brennan wanted to do. And there was pushback from the other agencies who obviously didn't want to do something so crazy. And yes, this must, must, must be investigated. You have to, you have to say, wow, you know, this is really what's at stake here. This is a very big deal. We had uh, effectively a planned coup d'etat against an incoming president of the United States, something which continued. So with the Mueller report out and with the idea essentially that, that there was no collusion, we're still not at a point of safety in the sense of saying, okay, there can now be a presidency because you've got half of the major players in Washington, D.C. about to be exposed as traitorous criminals. I've never really revealed this on air. But in my first five or six conversations with the president, I said, sir, you've got to go after them. They are not going to stop coming after you. They have embeds, stay behind networks inside the government. They have set up a ministry of truth with Defense Department money to target all the independent press and to shut us down. They are working against you. They have moles. He'd say, one moment, Alex, one moment. He'd come back and he goes, keep going, keep going. This, see, Trump would try to call up and pat me on the head. And the last time I talked to him, I said, Mr. President, I don't need you to call up and thank me, okay? I need you to defend yourself, and I need you to understand this is going on. Now, I know for a fact Hannity started telling him this a year and a half ago to the point of six months ago, Trump was, was mad at Hannity. Now they're back lovey-dove. And the last time I talked to the president, I said, I think he figured out you have to go after him. And I think he figured out they're never going to back down. And he said, no, I think you're right. I think you're right. And I said, sir, it's because you're better than them. You're self-made. They're from the political class. They're all dishonorable. They're all two-faced. You just have to understand you're not dealing in real estate anymore. And he goes, I know, I know, Alex. We'll keep it up. We'll be talking a lot more soon. I don't care about being patted on the head. I said, Mr. President, you don't need to call me anymore. All you do is have your people watch my show and listen to my show when I do an emergency message to you. And I need you to watch them. And he said he will, and he does. Why do you think they want to get rid of certain people in the White House? Certain people, like Miller and others. And so that's why we're so targeted, because the president listens to us, and he knows we've told him basically everything before anybody else did. I mean, I told him not to trust Kelly, and I told him not to trust Mattis, and man, I got threatened over that. And they obviously have my phones tapped because they have this one high-level CIA guy I call up and they start getting really threatening. And I go, and I go, oh, I haven't done anything. He goes, you, you know what you've done, getting rid of our command and control up there so he can be out of control. Hey, he got elected, not you. And I've never been commissioned to be in the military. But the president told me, keep it up, press the attack, don't stop. Well, you know what? As long as he doesn't stop, I won't stop. It doesn't mean he's got to be perfect. doesn't mean he has to have all the answers. But as long as he is an American president and tries to do the best interest of the country, I'm going to back him to the hilt, no matter how many threats or how much garbage or what goes on.
and it feels so good and satisfying to go through all this hell and then to see the back being broken of the globalists. Can you hear it? Because their back's breaking right now. We're busting their guts open right now. But uh, these were the two that uh, talked about the insurance policy, just in case Hillary Clinton loses. If uh, she loses, we've got an insurance policy. Well, that was the insurance policy. Now she lost, and now they're trying to infiltrate the administration to uh, really, it's a coup. It's spying. It's everything that you could imagine. It's hard to believe in this country that we would have had that. I don't know if you remember a long time ago, very early on, I used the word wiretap, and I put it in quotes, meaning surveillance, spying. You can sort of say whatever if you want, but that was a long time ago. And I've never seen anything like a blow up like you've never seen. Now I understand why, because they thought two years ago when I said that just on a little bit of a hunch and a little bit of wisdom maybe, uh, they, the, the, it blew up because they thought maybe I was wise to them or they were caught. And that's why, because if they were doing anything wrong, it would have just gone by. Nobody would have cared about it. It was pretty insignificant, I thought, when I said it. And uh, it's uh, pretty amazing. So you see now they're in, trying to infiltrate the White House. This is long after the election. It's a disgrace. And again, hopefully the attorney general will do what's right, and I really believe he will. Mr. President, the attorney general actually used the word spying on your campaign. We know of Stefan Halper and his contacts that he made with Papadopoulos and Carter Page and Sam Clovis. Uh, we know about the FISA warrant, as the Grassley Graham memo said, the bulk of information in the application was the Clinton bought and paid for Russian, of all things, dossier, ignored by the Mueller report, which I'll ask you about in a, in a second here. But those are two specific incidents of attempts to get into your campa campaign, your reaction to all that. Well, I think they made many attempts, and then you see the lying, and you see the leaking, and you see Comey lie to Congress, nothing happens. You see him leaking, nothing happens. And this is leaking classified information. This is leaking really big stuff. And, and, and this is what I told the president over and over as well, because at one level they were saying, okay, we're going to leave you alone, we know you've got us. But behind the scenes they were trying to undermine, trying to have a coup, lying to Congress. That's why they can't just be allowed to run around. I get going after the globalists could trigger them to stage something even bigger. It doesn't matter. You can't let these criminals run free. They're out of control. They're arrogant. Hillary's on the news this week saying arrest Trump with all the dirt on her and Lynch and all of them. It's all up on newswars.com. We've been literally the first to break all this down. They started coming at us with the insurance policy and everything they did was so dishonest. Uh, and then... We really uh, started looking into a lot of things like her deleted emails and acid-washed emails, which is unheard of because of the expense of doing it, and uh, how she got away with it, how her lawyer got away with it, how all of these things happened. Don't forget, when they interviewed her, that was on July 4th weekend. It was very, very late into the July 4th weekend. They asked her questions. They didn't have a stenographer. They didn't have anybody swear her in. They didn't have a tape recorder. They just walked in, asked her some questions, and that was fine. In the meantime, look at what she's done, how she's destroyed the lives of people that were on our campaign. She's destroyed their lives in the DNC. And frankly, when the FBI went into the DNC, the DNC told them to get the hell out of here. Think of that. They told that to the FBI, and they wouldn't give them the server. I want to find out what's on that server, the DNC server. Because that's the big thing. Nobody's seen that server yet. The FBI didn't see it. And these mm -hmm. are the top people at the FBI where you had absolute dirty cops. These were dirty cops. Now, the FBI, I know FBI guys, these are the best in the world. But the people leading it, Comey and McCabe and Strook and Page and all of these people, the lawyer who admitted, frankly, how crooked things were. I mean, the, the, when that testimony comes out, it's already come out partially. When that testimony comes out from the attorney for the FBI, you'll see. So I, I really say now we have to get down, because this was a coup. This was an attempted overthrow of the United States government. We had people coming out to vote from all over this country that are in love with what we're doing.
It's called Make America Great Again. That's what we've done and we're doing. And this was an overthrow, and it's a disgraceful thing. And uh, I don't. I think it's far bigger than Watergate. I think it's possibly the biggest scandal in political history in this country, maybe beyond political. So I think that a lot of things are being learned right now, just like you just mentioned uh, just a few moments ago. Again, with Strzok and Page, these are sick people. These are sick, sick people. You know. So let's see what happens with McCabe and Comey and Brennan and Plapper. They weren't in the act. And let's see what happens, and let's see how high it goes up, because it's inconceivable when it goes to Clapper, Brennan, Comey, these people, I would imagine that some other people, maybe a little bit higher up, also knew about it, and maybe a lot higher up. Clapper and Brennan, especially Brennan, he's the real mastermind, ran up on television on CNN, MSNBC, and said, we're not getting in trouble. I'm not worried about being indicted for illegally spying on Trump. I was ordered to by Obama. Still illegal. Then you lied to Congress after Obama was out of office. You are done. The trigger was already pulled before Hillary went and ran her mouth about arresting Trump last week. But it's done, lady. So we need to, everybody needs to have their eyes peeled, though, for dirty tricks they might pull to try to derail this, because they are definitely scared right now. Now, let me get to the thing, though, that is the wild card here. A lot of people think, well, there's the Republican Party and there's the Democrat Party. And then... There's the legislative uh, that's made up of the two parties, and then you've got, of course, the executive that's the president, and then you've got the judiciary that's the courts. And Trump's got a lot of the governors, and he's got the Senate, and uh, he's got the executive, but we don't have the House. And you look at it, and you think of the election coming up as if Bernie Sanders or somebody like Biden are battling for control of the Democratic Party. Hillary Clinton and the globalists are still in control MoveOn.org, George Soros, they still call the shots. And that's why Hillary's so arrogant. And that's why they're pushing Joe Biden, because he's part of that combine. So Trump has to go ahead and prosecute Hillary, because just that happening will make everybody roll over on her and her cohorts. But if that doesn't happen, she can still arrogantly sit there and threaten her minions in the FBI, the CIA. She doesn't control all of them, but key people. They've been stacking the deck for a long time. They've been putting their moles in there for a long time. She's got to put that confidence game on so that all these mutinous individuals inside the government keep following their orders to sabotage the country. But Trump talks about the interview, the record number of people resigning. He likes that. They're getting out now. You go back a year ago, two years ago, Brennan, Clapper, others, Mud, uh, they would all say, hang on. A Comey said, if you're in the government, stay there and fight this president. Don't do what he says in the executive. Basically engage in espionage because it's criminal what they're doing. So the gloves are off and you're going to see Trump because he's exercising rightful power, not a usurpation of power, not a power grab, but a real defense. You're going to see massive arrest. They're beginning. The roll-up has begun. The grand juries are open. I'll say this too. I've been around 24 years. President Trump came on my show and said, your reputation is amazing, I will not let you down. No one knows who QAnon is. It's a bunch of people on 4chan and 8chan. It says some good things, it says some bad things. But even after I've tried to be nice to 4chan and 8chan and, and, and the whole Q thing, it comes out and says, Jones is a Zionist shill, he's gonna get arrested, all this crap. Trump daughter is married to a Orthodox Jew. Trump is pro-Israel, but you guys don't attack him because he's too big a target. But see that paradox of Q becoming anti-Semitic? That's not the real Q, if Q was ever real. We don't need a bunch of anti-Semitic crap, a bunch of anti-Israel stuff. That's a diversion. The chi are the issue. The EU's the issue. The UN collapsing our borders the issue. I mean, what do you think's going on here? But, but the idea, again, how I'm being attacked from the rear by so-called QAnon, that's how I started going after QAnon as they were attacking me. Again, who is QAnon? Oh, let's all just trust some anonymous thing that lays out breadcrumbs and says, as we all go, we all go, and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, fine. Just leave me alone. Let me go out and be a real person in the field, in the arena. And it just doesn't stop. And so, again, the question to QAnon, whoever it is, whatever groups that magically have, I could pose as QAnon online, start a website, and say whatever I wanted. It's crazy. And people love riddles, and they love jigsaw puzzles, and they love this. And I've seen some really good stuff Q's put out. 
whoever it's a consortium i've seen some bad stuff it's like people used to ask do, do you like anonymous and i said a lot of good stuff comes out of anonymous anonymous is anybody that's a whistleblower so a lot of anonymous is good a lot of anonymous is bad and i think some of the lower iq people out there just want something simple they can believe in to go along with and it's very very dangerous that's all i'm saying so yeah no collusion no obstruction 35 million dollars spent and unlimited manpower, woman power, and there's nothing, nothing. And it was a very bad two years for this country. But what has happened is we found everything going in the opposite direction. And I think now it's turning unbelievable. The tables have turned, and you're seeing things come out like you just, uh, like you just noticed. And... Uh, it's, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. It's very important for the country to now find out how that whole thing started. And in all fairness to Bob Mueller, it started long before he was appointed. This was going on long before that. You understand. Uh, the First Lady and I came down on the escalator on June 16th, and this started very shortly after that. It was a disgrace. Disgrace. Mr. President, we, we expect a lot more coming out in the days, weeks, and, and even months ahead. We know at least 53 more closed door, uh, the testimony closed door of many of these players. That will be released. We know that the inspector general, he now will have his report. We expect sometime in perhaps in May, likely in May, uh, where he will He's been investigating the FISA abuse issue. Um, and then, of course, we have Huber on leaking and, and whatever his report ultimately ends up becoming. Uh, we know that, you know, there, there's a lot of information. And then the issue, uh, you have, the last time I talked to you about a month ago, you said you would declassify the FISA applications. You would declassify Gang of Eight material, 302 material. Um, if the Grassley, Graham, Nunes memos are correct and the bulk of information in the FISA applications were even as the New York Times suggested this week, may have been misinformation from the Russians that Hillary bought and paid for, that was disseminated to the media and the American people before that election, you know, what would that mean to you? Well, first of all, I was very impressed that the New York Times did that, because that was the first good glimpse that maybe mainstream is going to pick up the greatest political scandal of in the history of our country. Again, bigger than Watergate, uh, because it means so much. This was a coup. This wasn't stealing information from an office in the Watergate apartments. This, is, this was an attempted coup, and it's inconceivable, like a third-world country, and inconceivable. And I have to say that I think a lot of information is coming out, and it's coming out fast, much faster than anybody would have thought. And there are a lot of people very nervous about things that are going on. So Trump knows what's going on, but he's, he's letting them stew in their juices and is making his move against him. I've talked to three people, two of which met with him personally, uh, one who was persecuted, one who's a major journalist, the other I'm not going to mention. Uh, and uh, they said this early last week that Trump is going to go after them. The Justice Department is going to indict them. They have all the proof. And so that's the big news is that uh, Trump is going to uh, push and green light uh, a political war with the deep state to indict Hillary, Comey, uh, McCabe, Strzok, Page, uh, Brennan, Clapper, uh, all of them. All of them have committed incredibly brazen crimes, thought they were invincible, thought they were above the law. And uh, Mueller, who was trying to pin this on Trump, rolled over, realizing how sloppily it had been done and which way the wind was blowing. Globalism is multinational corporations working with foreign authoritarian countries like China to take over other nation states that have open free societies. They use our open free society to come in, buy off politicians, buy off other companies to merge and create cartels or oligopolies, groups of monopolies working together to dominate and control and consolidate power. This is how 21st century warfare is carried out. But nationalists and populists across the world have been awakened to this threat and are taking action to restore control over our lives back to our central and local governments. This is the fight that the United States is deeply in the middle of right now. And that's why the globalists who were arrogant are now panicking and trying to censor Infowars.com and Newswars.com and my syndicated radio show because they know we've got our finger on the pulse of what's happening 
and that the president and the Pentagon and others are listening and know that we're telling the truth. And we've basically become the modern Paul Revere transmission of this republic. That's why it's so critical for all of you out there watching or listening to remember, without you taking action, without you overcoming the censors, without you by word of mouth, with your human intelligence overriding the AI censorship, we will be defeated and this restoration of the Republic could be defeated. So please keep spreading the word and whatever you do, remember we're only financed now by you. We're in your hands, InfoWarsStore.com. We've got huge specials running on a continued basis, hundreds of great products, things you and your family already need, like fluoride-free toothpaste, high quality, uh, again, the highest quality organic coffee that people absolutely love. Great protein bars and so much more. When you sign up for auto ship, you get an additional 10% off on of future orders. Come to InfoWarsStore.com today and continue to support free speech and freedom at the tip of the spear. Thank you all for your support and God bless you and God bless America.